My name's Nick Zitzman, and I um, work on the front ends to some of our web services like Wolfram Alpha and Wolfram Cloud, and I'm here to talk to you today about the Wolfram Cloud app. Now, um, those of you who were at um, last year's tech conference, um, you may have seen in the keynote address, um, Stephen um, gave you a very brief sneaky peek of the Cloud app, which was in development at the time. And we um, launched the app last April to coincide with the um, launch of the Apple Watch. It was an Apple Watch launch app. And um, today I would like to go over um, some of the th um, things related to Wolfram Clouds, like the system requirements, um, what you can do with the app, what you can't do with the app. Um, I'm going to give a live demo of the app. And in the end, I'll show you how you can get your own copy. So. Here are the system requirements. First of all, you need a Wolfram Cloud or private cloud account. You don't need a paid account. You can use a free account. Um, you can still sign in, view, view things, deploy things with the app if you have a free account. Um, if you have a private cloud account, um, if your organization owns um, a private cloud, then you can also use the app to access the, your private cloud server. And, um, you need an iOS device. Um, we require iOS 7 or later, but um, that re requirement will be up to iOS 8 or later um, real soon now. We don't have an Android version of the app yet. And we strongly recommend that you use the app on a device that has um, two gigabytes or more of physical memory, such as the iPad Air 2 and the iPhone 6S. Um, it'll also work on a device with one gigabyte of memory, which is the iPad 3, the 4, um, the original iPad Air, iPad Mini 2, 3, and 4, and the iPhone 5 and 6, and the iPod Touch 6. We really don't recommend that you use the, device, the app on an iOS device with less than a gigabyte of RAM. That includes the iPhone 4S, the iPad 2, iPod Touch 5, and the original iPad Mini. And the reason for that is because the front end has a very large memory requirement, and those devices that I listed off have only half a gig of memory inside them. And that is not good because um, the app will um, eat up all of your available memory, and um, the OS will step in and mercy kill the app. Now, iOS supports virtual memory. Every computer operating system now supports virtual memory. But what it doesn't support is it doesn't support swap. So once the um, system starts running out of memory, it starts mercy killing applications, including the front one, most one. Um, none of these devices are in production anymore. You can still use the app on the device, but um, you should only use it to um, um, manage files that are not notebooks. Um, now, you might want an Apple Watch. If you have uh, the iPhone version of the app, you can. Um, and you have an Apple Watch, you can view your deployments on, on the cloud on your Apple Watch. And I, um, I'll go into how you can do that a little bit later. Um, we will not run your battery all the way through because the kernel runs on the cloud side. So um, if you run a particularly large um, evaluation, we're not going to blow through all your batteries. Um, here are some of the things that you can do with the cloud app. You can connect to the, um, our cloud or your organization's private cloud. You can browse files and folders in the cloud space. You can create new notebooks if your plan allows you to create new notebooks. You can edit your existing notebooks inside our um, JavaScript front end. Um, anything that you can do um, in the cloud on your web, desktop web browser will also work inside the app. You can fill out instant APIs and instant web forms. You can um, magnify what you're looking at. You can um, copy and um, paste text from other iOS applications. Um, you will be able to copy and paste um, tech images as well in the next version of the app, and I will show you that as well. Um, you can insert images from the camera or photo gallery into uh, a notebook or a web form. Um, you can rename and delete your cloud objects. And you can also use the app to browse um, the online Wolfram documentation. Um, there are some things you cannot do in the cloud app. Um, you cannot cr currently create new folders. You can't move objects between folders quite yet. Um, you cannot create or view scheduled tasks. You cannot use the app to share files with other users like you could from the desktop. 
Um, you cannot resize 2D objects, and that is actually due to a um, bug, and we know about this and we're working on it. Um, likewise, you should also be able to rotate 3D objects, but due to another bug um, that we are currently working on, you can't do that yet. Um, obviously, we have no mobile system modeler, so that's not going to work. And um, if you have a connected device, um, that's, yeah, you can't um, read or um, write directly from a connected device like an Arduino or something like that. Um, you can still work with indirect sources like um, Datadrop, for example. So let's take a look. I'm going to switch devices now. Okay, you can see that. Um, I'm going to start the app up now. And um, first time, it's going to sign me in. Now, um, is this is your first time running the app. Um, one of the things after you sign in, it, it's, you're not seeing it right now because I've already done this, but um, we will ask you for your location, um, permission to ask your location. And the reason we do that is for um, the um, kernel um, evaluations that might use your geolocation. Um, we can use that information to give you um, uh, results that um, actually works off your current geolocation. If you don't give us that information, that is fine. But um, we're, any um, such evaluation is going to throw your geolocation off to some place in Kansas. Um, somewhere in the middle of Kansas. I think it's the default um, geolocation is um, the middle of the continental United States, which is um, somewhere um, lower central Kansas. Um, in any case, um, if you're concerned about your privacy, we do um, send in that information encrypted. And the information is governed according to our privacy policy. And I will show you that. You can touch the hamburger button here to bring up the master um, control to um, navigate. And if I touch my name up here, it's going to show account and settings. You can see our terms of service, privacy policy, um, by the way, this is also where you press the big red button to sign out. So while I'm here, I'm going to create a new notebook. All right. Um, now, those of you who've used the desktop front end, this is going to be quite a bit different um, looking at a mobile front end because a lot of stuff that would work on the desktop doesn't work quite well on mobile. Like you might notice there's no tongue button because good luck trying to touch that. So what we have instead is, if you look down at the bottom of the screen here, um, don't know if you can see that, we have a little pop-out view there, which we um, in internally call the raft. And from the raft, you have some commands here. You can create a new cell. You can paste um, content from other applications. And these arrow buttons up here, I'm going to get to after we create some new cells. So I'll press a new cell or from language input. And here we can do something. Um, your usual iOS keyboard will appear down here. And we, um, just like with the Wolfram Alpha app, we have a keyboard on top of that one for um, doing um, mathematical and uh, programming um, in cells. And if there's a button here, big button called Evaluate. I'm going to touch that Evaluate button, and it'll run my evaluation just like that. Um, I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. So we have a feature here called magnif font magnification. It's this um, button here. And I am going to blow that up for you. You can probably see that better from the back there. OK. Um, let's do something a little bit more ambitious than putting two and two together. So what should I do here? Let's do, um, as you can see, as I type here, we have autocomplete. Sign of x, cosine of y to bounds of x, negative pi to positive pi 
Um, oops. Do the same thing for y. <coughs> Close up. Evaluate. And it'll run, run, run. There we are. And we can go back in here and we can make editorial changes if we want. Run the evaluation again. There we go. Um, one other thing we can do here is this button in between the um, AA button and this menu button here. This is what the menu button does, by the way. You can evaluate, rename, delete from there. This button here will bring up the documentation center and this will go to the web and you can browse the Wolfram documentation from here or you can even search um, like Okay, and you can cancel out of that and we can go back to where we were and um, as you use the app you can go back and forth between the documentation and what you were looking at and we will keep the state the same every time. Um, let's do something more interesting here. Let me show you um, photos. So, edge Correct. And I'm going to insert a photo here. It's this button right above the evaluate button. It's not in the currently shipping version of the app, but it um, will be in the next version. And I'm going to take a photo from my photo library. Can you see that all right? This is his meow the Panther King, great, great tycoon of everything that he surveys, and he's um, sitting there um, evaluating his kingdom from high atop Pride Rock. And we're going to close that up. Now, ironically, my cat's name is The Edge. So we are going to run Edge Detect here and see if Edge Detect will actually detect Edge. Yes, it does. There he is. Um, OK. Now, let's go back to these arrow buttons down here. Um, you can see that um, the um, up arrow button has suddenly um, become available. And this is how we move in between cells inside the cloud app because um, it's not realistic to be, um, expect everybody to be able to perfectly touch um, each of these um, cell brackets over here on the right hand side. So we can use this to go up and down and we can also do evaluation and we can do copy and paste, and we can also close and reopen groups by touching this button here in the lower left corner, like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back here, but since I haven't saved my work, it's going to remind me to um, actually give this object a name. If I choose exit without renaming, it's going to be saved to my um, unnamed cloud objects folder, um, or I can actually give it a name here. Something really inspired. And you can see that it appeared in the lower um, left corner of the icons down there. Okay. Now, let's um, do something that isn't a form. Let's go to deployments, um, instant web forms. Um, the, here are some um, web forms that I've deployed previously, and you can view these and um, interact with them inside the application as well. This is one I made a while ago that um, translates between um, English and uh, um, crypto language from a popular video game from 15 years ago called Albed. And let me type something in here. Go. Drek ek e prat. That's it. Yeah, that's what we just wrote there in our bed. And um, now we can press the X button here to go back to where we were. And we can go back and. All right. Um, the one other thing I wanted to show you is um, Apple Watch integration. And um, we can't do this from the iPad because um, there is no. 
um, way to pair an Apple Watch with an iPad, but we can do this with iPhone. So I'm going to switch devices here again. Sorry, I got to log in. Okay. Okay, so um, the way we do um, sharing with the Apple Watch here is I've got a folder here called Watch Apps, which has some Watch App deployments. Both of these were from um, Stephen's blog post last April with, um, it was titled something like Watch Gallery um, with um, d some deployments here that can go to Apple Watch now. You may notice that there's a new button here on the iPhone version of the app up here in the top right corner next to the search button. I touch that and it says select object to show on your Apple Watch. I can um, select something here and save it, and it gets badged with a little badge down there. Now, when you get the Wolfram Cloud app for your iPhone and you have a paired Apple Watch, the um, Wolfram Cloud app for Apple Watch will automatically be loaded onto your watch. And since I don't have a camera here, I can't actually show you the app. But um, when you have it running, it will show you all of the items that you have deployed to your Apple Watch. In a, in a watch kit table view. And you can touch any of those objects and it will show any object in a read-only form. Um, forms won't work, but pretty much every other deployment up to and including notebooks will work. And it will look something like this um, when you actually um, view a file on your Apple Watch. All right. That what I wanted to show you with the cloud app. Now I'm going to switch back to my desktop. All right. So those of you who have an iPhone here, you can um, launch your QR code reader here and point your QR code reader to the screen. And you can download the um, app. That link will take you directly to the iTunes store. And I put the um, underlying Wolfram language code to get that barcode image with the URL up front, so I'm not rickrolling you. <laughs>